What's up guys, Dylan with the Wash Nerds and today we're going to take a look at how to wire up your own 12 volt soft wash system. So I highly recommend this is something that you guys do yourselves. Um, it's really not that complicated and it's going to save you money and it's also going to make sure that you actually know how to work on your own equipment. So if you just go ahead and buy a soft wash system from somebody else and then say a wire goes bad or the pump fails, you're really not going to have a clue how to even work on it. But if you build your own system and hopefully learn from the explanation in this video, you'll know a lot, lot more about your own equipment. So just to jump right into it, um, this is the exact soft wash pump that we use and it's the one that I'll be showing you on screen. The only difference is it doesn't really show the relay on screen. This is just the relay that operates from the uh, pressure sensor. So as water's flowing in and building pressure at the pump, uh, there's a pressure sensor that's actually reading the outlet pressure. So when that hits its um, high pressure mark, it turns the pump off and that's what the relay is there to do. So besides that, you do just have two straight up wire leads on this, a red and a black. Your red is going to be your positive, black is going to be your negative. So let's jump right into the wiring. Alright, so yes, we are filming in Excel today, but I'll also show you guys what it looks like on our trailer. The trailer is a little bit sloppy on the wiring at the moment because we did replace the pump at the very end of the season, right before we put it up for to be winterized, and I just haven't taken the time to kind of tidy up all the wiring again. So let's look at this nice, clean Excel version. Um, as you can see here, we have the full circuit laid out for you. So starting with the battery. Um, if you guys do not have a battery existing yet, I would go ahead and buy a marine deep cycle battery. The reason to buy a marine deep cycle battery over a different 12 volt, such as like a standard car battery, is marine deep cycle batteries will allow you to get a more stable voltage between the positive and the negative terminals over a greater range of the charge of the battery. So maybe from like 100% all the way down to 20 or 30%, you're going to get a much more stable 12 volts than you would with the standard car battery. So the reason that's important is you'll notice more consistent performance out of your pump. So if you're washing a roof or something, you're just gonna be getting a lot more stable uh, flow out of your pump. And that's why I always recommend Marine Deep Cycle batteries. They're really not that much more money anyways. So go ahead and make the upgrade if you can afford it. So starting with the red positive terminal, we have a wire running from the battery to the line side of our circuit breaker. So the line side is always going to be coming from your power source and the load side is always going to be pointing towards what you're trying to power. So the reason we even have a circuit breaker in here guys is say this pump failed or uh, you know one of the lines flew off and you got bleach everywhere, it starts conducting electricity. This is basically your safety fuse, and you can use fuses in place of circuit breakers, but if anything bad were to ever happen, you can just reset this, whereas a fuse, you'd have to completely stop and replace the fuse if you have a spare. If not, you're making a trip to the hardware store. So it's a lot simpler to use and a lot quicker to get back up and running. That's why we like circuit breakers, and that's why I'll always use them. So from the top side of the circuit breaker, you have another wire. This is again color coded red to signify that it's the positive side of the circuit. That's running from the load side to our 12 volt switch. So in normal operation, we're probably just going to leave this circuit breaker closed so that way you have electricity capable of flowing through there. And then you'll just turn the pump on and off from the switch. So that means you can mount it to the outside of your panel, outside of your toolbox, whatever you're going to mount this thing in and that'll be an easy access point to kick this pump on and off. So from the other side of this switch, this runs directly to the red lead of the pump, and that's pretty much it for the positive side. So for the negative side, you can see it's a lot simpler. We're just literally running from the 12 volt negative straight to the lead on the pump, and that's it for the wiring. One other thing to note, guys, uh, we do use 12, sorry, 10 gauge stranded in this application because this pump 
this specific pump that I have requires or states that it has 24 amp max peak current. So if 24 amp is the peak, then we want to make sure that our wire can actually handle that many amps. So that's why we need to size our wire appropriately. 10 gauge stranded is actually rated for 30 amps. So that's above our max current of our pump, which is good. Same with the circuit breaker. We made sure that this was sized to 30 amps. So that way we're not getting nuisance pops from our pump and we're allowing you know safe usage and also make sure that your switch is going to be rated high enough if you go with any of the parts selected that we have linked in the down down in the description that's all going to be sized properly for you we've been using this exact setup for right around two years and it's worked well for us now that we've covered our circuit uh, let's take a look at how we actually charge the battery so with the pump and battery that I have linked in the description, which is our exact setup, you'll probably get enough runtime to do two or three roofs, um, you know, or one or two house washes pretty consistently. But you're still going to want a method for charging this battery and keeping that maintained. So what we chose to do is buy a NOCO Genius Charger. I just checked Amazon. This was about 70 bucks as of recording this video. Um, but what this does is you attach the red alligator clip and the black alligator clip to the red positive post of the battery and black post of the battery respectively. So black to black, red to red. And then you just have a standard male wall plug. So you can just leave this loose in your trailer or toolbox, whatever you have this kind of whole setup housed in. Uh, what we chose to do just to keep everything nice and waterproof is we ran it to a female plug and then attached this bulkhead fitting to the outside of our trailer. So that's a nice waterproof seal and then that just houses another male plug inside of that. So when you get the trailer home all you have to do is plug your extension cord into the wall and then plug your female plug in and this charger will automatically turn on and it'll charge your battery at kind of like a it charges it with kind of like a smart methodology, so it's a lot better than just a standard fast charger. It'll kind of do what's best for the battery life, which is why I really like this product. There are cheaper options. I've seen some at like, you know, Harbor Freight or other companies like that, but I cannot say enough good things about NOCO Genius chargers. I have a couple for a couple different reasons, and I've always been very happy with them. All right, so here's our actual setup. So. We have our marine deep cycle battery sitting within our cheap battery box just to give it a little bit extra water protection. We also have a top cover for that, not shown, but here's our positive wire. This is a ring terminal running from the positive side of the battery all the way over to the top end of our circuit breaker. So this runs through the circuit breaker. Um, the incoming side, as mentioned, is the line side outgoing is going to be your load side this is actually labeled line and load but coming out of the circuit breaker it runs over to our 12 volt switch so this is what we mainly use to turn this off and on the wire positive coming from the 12 volt switch runs directly to our pump so this is the red pump lead and underneath this electrical tape is a disconnect pair which I'll show you guys but that's how we make our connections, so that way we can swap out our pumps pretty easily. And that's it for the positive side. So as far as the negative side, negative side's even simpler than that. We just have our ring terminal coming with the black wire directly over to our pump. So you can see another disconnect pair under that electrical tape. And that's how this whole thing functions. So if you guys do decide to buy the same circuit breaker, uh, this one in particular it has a little leg that comes down if it's popped so you might be able to see that but this is the trip button so you can see that little leg flop out but if it's ever popped and you need to reset it it's just as simple as folding that back up in so that's gonna be it for our soft wash wiring this is our battery charger so this port is actually waterproof it has a nice rubber gasket around it and you can just 
fold that plug over when you're not using it, but we always just plug this in at the end of the night and cable runs through the wall to our battery charger. So that's that NOCO Genius charger. These two leads run to our battery terminals and those alligator clamps which keep our battery topped off. You don't have to do any kind of settings changes in this. It's as simple as plug it in and let it run. So I highly recommend this and if I can remember right, I think we got it on sale for 50 bucks so it's not expensive either. Just in case any of you guys aren't that familiar with electrical, I figured I'd explain the ring terminals and disconnect pairs that we use. So this is what a ring terminal looks like. You can see it has the opening that forms the ring and then has a place for you to insert your wire. So this ring is going to slide over the threaded piece of you know either the circuit breaker or the battery and then you're going to attach that with a nut on top and then for the wire side you're going to take your wire now you need to strip back the insulation about a quarter inch and then you insert that into the back of it and with that on there you'll just crimp it on with some pliers and if you're using a, an actual pair of crimping pliers there's an insulated and non-insulated portion for crimping you're going to want the insulated since this does have the insulative yellow coating but as far as stripping back the wire what you're really looking to do is just remove this um, coating the black outer so you're either going to take a pair of wire strippers if you have the right size I do not have the right size for 10 gauge so I actually used a just a blade and stripped back that insulation if you do want to use that method I just suggest being very careful with this stranded wire it's easy to cut away a bunch of little strands and then you may not end up with the proper rating speaking of proper rating all of these are rated accordingly so all of these yellow ones that I have here are either 10 to 12 gauge rated for 10 gauge wiring and they're okay up to 30 amps so that's why I double checked some are some aren't and sometimes they do use different coloring so here's the disconnect pair you can see there's a male and a female and they just slide together and click into place I'm not gonna do that because they're a pain in the butt to get apart but exact same concept you just slide your wiring in the back and that's how those work so I think that wraps it up for today's video if you guys do have any questions for me or any questions on electrical wiring I'd be happy to answer those in the comments or maybe address it in a future video but thanks for watching